Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome back again to First Tamara Presbyterian Church as we meet together this evening. Hopefully you enjoyed the morning service and uh, trust that as we meet together in our family worship settings that uh, you'll be blessed in your own homes as again we meet together on God's day in praise and in worship. Just to remind you that we'll meet together in this format again next week, the morning service being broadcast at half past 11 and the evening service at 6.45. And as always, we're grateful to, to David and to the AV team who are ensuring that the services are broadcast and edited and everything's done with them that needs to be done. So thank you to everybody who's involved in the background um, of these services. Just uh, with regard to the announcements, um, I'll reiterate just two. The first is that don't forget the prayer meeting, which will take place now this evening um, at nine o'clock. Um, we had one on Friday night and one on Saturday night. And the final one is tonight as we respond just to the moderator of the General Assembly's call to prayer for the weekend as we petition the Lord um, and pray to him during this time of being out of the buildings. And secondly, just to say that um, from tomorrow, the Advent 123s will be going on to Facebook and uh, do watch them, enjoy, um, enjoy them and uh, encourage each other. And uh, if you still haven't returned to your one, two, three, um, please send them through so we can edit them. It takes a wee bit of editing to get them all done, especially for the singers and the music ones. We need to put words and stuff onto them. So um, that will be great. Let's just uh, come to God in praise. Um, this is the season of Advent, a season of expectancy. Uh, this morning we read from Micah chapter five and the expectancy that it is as we're waiting and looking forward to the coming of the Messiah. O come, O come, Emmanuel. O come, O come, God with us, the one who will become the child in the manger. And we're going to echo that just now as we open in praise.
come to God now in prayer. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for these ancient words, not only ancient words, but ancient music that has been used, Lord, throughout centuries to sing about the coming of Emmanuel. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lowly exile here. Lord, how we wait for the Son of God to appear. And Lord, when we look at Isaiah 9, that portion that we studied this morning and that we'll study more in depthly this evening, we see that Israel was about to be taken captive by Assyria. Isaiah 8 tells us that they were about to be thrust into deep, thick darkness. They were captives. And yet, the promise of the Messiah kept them going. And yet, the coming of the Messiah is something that they rejoice in and that we rejoice in. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel. Lord, if you like, we are also a captive people, born into captivity, born into the state of sin. Lord, in thought, word, and deed, we err, transgress, we commit iniquity, we sin, we miss the mark day by day, hour by hour. We need you. We need you to come, Lord, into our hearts and reign as Emmanuel, God with us. Lord, once again into the depths of our hearts, we in silence and serenity, we confess not only our sin but our need of you. And because of what you've done, because of your coming, Lord, you've paid the ransom. You've set us free. The bonds, the shackles that shackled us to Adam, now bind us to Christ. Rejoice, rejoice. Oh, how we rejoice today. Lord, perhaps we're sitting in our homes and we're morbid about the fact that we can't be here. Yet, Lord, this gospel transcends what's going on in our world at the minute. We rejoice. So we thought of this morning, the government, the world, nations, pandemics, executives, congregations. Lord, they're all upon your shoulders because you're in control. You're in charge. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Oh Lord, how we thank you for gospel light that shines into our thick, gloomy darkness. Thank you. You're shining bright. Just like the lights on the Christmas tree here, you shine bright. You shine in the darkest of places. You've shone into our hearts. You've shone into this world. Oh Lord, shine through your word this evening that we might behold incandescent light, burning light, bright light. And Lord, if we're watching, having never realized our need of having our shackles to sin and darkness in the world broken, may we tonight turn from the world and turn to Christ, turn from darkness, turn to light, Turn from hopelessness to hopefulness. Oh Lord, be with your people through the study of your word this evening. Bless us, we pray, for Christ's sake. Amen. As you know, in our evening services, we have been watching some little, um, little DVD clips of some of our PCI missionaries which helps us in our thinking and in our support of the United Appeal, which the envelopes are, are there for you to be able to uh, put into the, the buckets the next time that you're back here in the building again. Uh, you can, of course, during this time still give via standing order and direct debit. 
But this evening, we have a, a little different uh, slot. Uh, this isn't a PCI missionary we're going to be looking at this evening, but someone who we know so well, someone who comes indeed from our lo own locality and has connection here in First Jamara. And so we're grateful to Linda Corey, who works for CEF Europe and who is based in Romania. Now, I will add a little um, caveat that this video is a little longer than some of the little PCI ones that have been produced. And so if you like, I'm going to say pause right now, go and boil the kettle, make your cup of tea or your cup of coffee, your little biscuit, you might need two, and enjoy um, your refreshment as you watch Linda. Her video was slightly longer, but it's very informative. And because we know her, it's so good to see her on the screen, to hear of her work, to hear how things are progressing, not only in Romania and in Moldova, but also in the whole of Europe, where Linda is involved in the training and coordinating of ministry. Um, and actually, the Linda Macaulay that Linda mentions in her video um, was one of my folk in Dervet Church before I came here to First Jamara. Um, and uh, I had the great joy of commissioning Linda into full-time ministry with CEF. So to actually hear of two Lindas is special for me, but I hope that you enjoy this video. As I say, have your, your tea and your coffee as you watch it and enjoy it. Hello everyone and greetings from Sibiu, Romania, where I am at the moment. It would be so nice to be with you all, uh, but unfortunately the world we, we live in doesn't allow us to, to be together uh, in person. But thankfully technology does, at least in this way. And uh, so it's great to be able to connect with you and to be able to give you a little update uh, on the Ministry of Child Evangelism Fellowship in Europe and in particular the training ministries of the Education Department uh, which is uh, the part of the ministry I am particularly uh, involved in. I want to begin by sharing a story with you. I want to take you with me to Bulgaria and uh, I want to introduce you to this young man. His name is Andre. Andre uh, was uh, born into a little village in Bulgaria. Uh, when he was uh, 10 years old, he put his trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as his saviour at a Good News Club in his village. Uh, a Good News Club which was in fact started by a CEF missionary sent from Germany to Bulgaria. And Andre began to grow in his love and knowledge of the Lord. When he was about 20 years old, uh, he moved closer to the big city of Pleven, uh, where he became a volunteer in the ministry of CEF there, uh, along with the local worker uh, who's called Krasi. Krasi could see the uh, potential in Andre, and uh, so she started to invest in him. And she took him through the, the Teaching Children Effectively Level 1 training program which is one of CEF's courses, uh, which specializes in evangelism through the Good News Club. And Andre benefited so much from that course uh, as he uh, was involved in Good News Clubs in that area. Cressy didn't stop there in her investment and she uh, took Andre through the next level of TCE, uh, level two, where teachers are trained uh, to help children who have trusted in the Lord to grow in their faith. And again, Andre benefited greatly from this training and his ministry amongst the children he, the, that he was teaching benefited greatly. Uh, the investment didn't stop there. Uh, Andre then took the Junior Youth Challenge training course as he started to work with teens in the area. Krasi uh, continued to encourage Andre in his ministry amongst the children. And the next step in that investment brought him here to Sibiu, Romania. He came here in the summer of 2017 uh, to take the three-month children's ministry leadership course. 
This was when I had the opportunity to meet Andre and I had the joy of investing just a little bit in his life um, as he prepared to go back to Bulgaria and to continue his ministry amongst the children there. Do you know what Andre is doing today? Well, he is a full-time CEF worker serving the Lord in Bulgaria, teaching in 13 good news clubs every week. Uh, he's teaching in a local school, uh, uh, religious education. He's uh, teaching in, a, in an orphanage. He works amongst Roma children. Uh, he's teaching his own junior youth challenge club uh, every two weeks. Amazing. Amazing to think uh, what God does uh, when he saves a life and then others invest in that life and uh, help uh, that person to grow and to develop in their love and knowledge of the Lord and in ministry. That's what happened to Andre. I could never reach the children he is reaching. But God gave me the opportunity to invest a little bit in his life and he is reaching so many children that I could never reach. You know, this, this whole idea of training others uh, to, to, to evangelize, it's not uh, an original CEF idea, not at all. We actually see this uh, as an example in the life of the Lord Jesus. Just think, uh, in Luke chapter nine, we read about the Lord Jesus sending out the 12, men that he had trained and invested in. Later in Luke chapter 10, uh, we see the Lord Jesus doing the same thing, but this time with 72 disciples that he sends out to evangelize. The Lord Jesus gave us a great example, a great example of um, the incredible potential uh, that exists when we invest in the lives of others to go out, to reach and to teach and to take the gospel message. I really praise God for the opportunity of being involved in this training ministry that CEF uh, has uh, implemented right from the beginning of the mission organization. And uh, I have enjoyed all the years I've worked and served in CEF to be involved in training. And especially in these last three years when my ministry has specifically been in uh, the training ministry, I have enjoyed so much uh, being part of that work and working together with the European educational team as we uh, provide uh, tools and training courses for our CEF workers and teams around Europe to be able to use as they invest uh, in others to take the gospel uh, to children. A lot of, of my time uh, over the last number of years and uh, especially in the last number of months uh, has been working on those existing training courses that exist like the Children's Ministry Leadership Course, our TCE training program, summer training programs, preschool training programs, junior youth challenge programs, instructor level development programs which are special training courses for our full-time workers to help them to be able to teach the TCE programs. There are so many different training programs that have been developed down through the years. And uh, to be able to, to work with the team on renewing those, updating those, refreshing them, uh, keeping them relevant, uh, and to produce new training uh, tools for our workers that they can use as they seek to, to, to train, whether it's churches and in, in city, urban areas with the City Kids seminars or churches through the Teach Others Also seminars, whatever the, the situation, that our workers have available these tools to be able to, to use them, keeping them relevant, maintaining them, uh, updating them. And a lot of my time is spent on doing those kinds of tasks, but also teaching. And uh, that's it's, it's a great, um, uh, part of the work to be in the classroom or to be online as it has been recently and to be able to invest and train uh, others in the ministry of child evangelism. And I want to share just a little bit with you about some of those training uh, courses uh, pre-COVID uh, and even post-COVID uh, and to just to, I hope, to encourage you as you see what God is doing 
uh, through this ministry of investing and teaching in others. Last summer, uh, I had the joy of spending most of my time with the group that you see in this photograph. Uh, they came to take the children's ministry leadership course here in Sibiu and uh, they uh, represent eight different countries uh, that, uh, that they came from. And I had the joy of spending most of my summer with uh, this group of young people. Many of them, praise God, have come in to CEF ministry full time. In fact, over half of them that you see in that photograph. Now, I won't tell you all their stories, there's no time, but let me tell you uh, just about uh, one little couple uh, who took that training, Samir and Melanie. They come from Bosnia Herzegovina. They come from a Muslim background. Uh, God saved them and brought them to the CMLC. And during their time here, uh, God confirmed his calling in their lives. They're now serving CEF full time in Bosnia. And uh, I could never reach children in Bosnia, at least not in that language. Um, I could never go to the places that Samir and Melanie are going to, but God is using them. He's using them in a little place called uh, Kakani. They have a good news club there. 20 children come every week. And just recently they shared how they had the joy of leading four of those children to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Last year, they organized different evangelistic sporting events. At one of those events, they had 50 teenagers who attended. They took 20 teenagers to winter camp. Uh, they started a new good news club in a little place called Zenitsa. Last Christmas, they were able to reach over 400 children through Christmas club ministry. Amazing. I could never reach those children. What a joy to be part, a little part of this investing uh, process, teaching, training, uh, so that others can go out and to reach uh, children with the gospel. Last October, I had the, the privilege of being part of a teaching team uh, that taught this group uh, of students. Now, most of them that you see in the photograph, they're all full-time CEF workers. And the course they attended here in Sibiu was the, the two-week instructor level training. Uh, some of them were taking the instructor level training to be able to teach TCE level one and the others for TCE level two. But again, imagine the potential in this group representing 13 different countries around Europe coming together for those two weeks. What a joy to have a little bit of, of, of an opportunity to invest in their lives and then they go back into their countries not only are they reaching children and evangelizing children directly, but they are training others to do the same thing, multiplying themselves so that many more children are able to hear the gospel. Praise God for this uh, opportunity. Linda McCauley was one of the, the workers who came to take this course. Maybe some of you know her. Uh, she's the full-time CEF worker in uh, County Mayo. Linda uh, told us about uh, one um, student who took a TCE level one course in her area, a lady called Mirka. As a result, she started a, uh, a ministry in her church for seasonal good news, uh, seasonal clubs at Christmas or Easter. Uh, those seasonal clubs, de clubs developed into um, weekly, a weekly good news club. And uh, she shared with Linda not so long ago just how much she enjoys uh, preparing for those clubs and how much she is being blessed as she prepares her Bible lesson and the whole program week by week. And she just can't wait until uh, TCE level two. Amazing, investing in others. And as a result, uh, many more teachers are trained, child evangelists are prepared and children are reached with the gospel in little places, little corners of uh, our European continent, uh, all around, whether it's a village or a town or a city. What a joy to be part of that uh, process. You know, some people have asked us, what happened when COVID hit to the training ministries? Did you stop? Uh, or what are you doing? Or, or what were you able to do? Well, as you can imagine, uh, 
everything went online. We were actually in the middle of an instructor course here in Sibiu uh, when COVID hit and uh, we were watching the first week of that train training course, the news every day, and we began to hear of borders closing down. And then on the middle Saturday, we made the decision that we would uh, stop the training and send everyone home because we had students, not just from Romania, but also from Moldova, Bosnia, and Serbia. And praise God on that middle Saturday, they left, they got home. And on the very next day, the Romanian borders closed down uh, for quite some time uh, after that. We were left then with the question, what do we do? And the answer was, we have another week of training, so let's do it online. And so for the first time, we used Zoom for our training uh, course ministry. And this began a wave, it was the beginning of a wave of training ministry that went online in the weeks and months that followed uh, by CEF teams all around Europe. And they continue uh, even to this day and will probably continue out into the future. Uh, God pushed us really out of our comfort zones uh, and uh, in many ways forced us to take our training ministries uh, online because of this whole COVID pandemic. And he has turned that into an incredible blessing. Hundreds of teachers have been trained and equipped as a result of this online training. Let me just tell you about one, uh, one country. Let me take you to Portugal. Joseas and Yolanda serve there uh, in the Lisbon uh, area. And uh, they shared with me that uh, we had our last face-to-face -face training course in the second week of March. Since then, our classes have been happening via Zoom every Tuesday and Thursday evening. Along with our training, we are also uh, doing pastoral work. Uh, many of our students are experiencing difficult times. Uh, some of them uh, are, have lost their jobs or know that they're going to lose their jobs. Um, and uh, teaching, encouraging, supporting via Zoom is now our main business. And uh, all over Europe, these opportunities not only of training, but of investing and helping uh, our volunteers and child evangelists to be prepared uh, for ministry amongst children uh, is going on. You know, D.L. Moody uh, once uh, made this statement, it's better to train 10 men to do the work than to do the work of 10 men. Now, Moody wasn't lazy, not at all. Um, neither was he tired when he said this, uh, but he too, realize the great potential there is in investing in the lives of others, of teaching others, so that many more are able to hear the gospel. The Lord Jesus himself gave us this example. Uh, teaching and training, investing, and then sending out into the, uh, into the great harvest field. Will you continue to pray for CEF training ministries around Europe? We need your prayers. I need your prayers. And let me just ask you to pray for a couple of things. While most of our face-to-face -face courses have uh, been canceled or postponed this year, one of them is continuing. And I would ask you to pray especially for that course. It's a children's ministry leadership course, which started in Germany on the 26th of September and will uh, continue through, God willing, till uh, the middle of December. 13 students taking this training. Will you pray that over these next weeks, God will keep everyone healthy and well, uh, that he will use the teachers who are coming and going week by week uh, to invest and uh, to really have an impact on the lives of these students? Uh, will you pray that God will call many of them to come into ministry full time? I have a personal prayer request, God willing, I plan to go over there to teach uh, from the 14th until the 28th of November. I've bought plane tickets, I'm planning to go, uh, and I'm praying it's God's will that I go. But will you just pray for all of those, uh, just for the need of, of getting there, and if it's God's will to get there, and that I can really be uh, a help and blessing for that course as I seek to invest in those young lives as well. 
pray too for all the online training that's going on around Europe at this time and really pray uh, that God will, will use our CEF teams around um, the continent as they take especially TCE level one and two programs online, uh, that God will, will use them and that many of those who are trained uh, will get involved in child evangelism and that many more children in Europe uh, will hear the gospel. And pray too uh, for uh, this, the educational team in Europe. Uh, I also value your prayers as we work on various projects at the moment uh, to be able to update our training materials, uh, taking some of them online. Uh, pray that God will give us the wisdom, give us the right people to be able to, uh, to do this well uh, and uh, that we can really continue to provide relevant and helpful training uh, courses and tools for our teams uh, right out across Europe. Thank you so much for the opportunity to share. Uh, it's so good to be able to do that uh, with you and I hope you are encouraged and uh, that you will continue uh, to be encouraged as you pray and uh, are part of this big ministry of bringing the gospel uh, to Europe's children. So thank you so much and God bless. Wasn't that good to hear and to see what Linda's up to in Romania? Let's now come to God as we pray for Linda and for her work. Lord, we thank you for the many years that Linda has been involved in ministry in Eastern Europe. Lord, we know that even some people from this congregation have traveled and been involved in outreach work in Moldova with Linda and with her Eastern European team. Lord, we pray for her. Lord, we know that as we watch the one, two, three videos that we might see a little appearance of Linda and we know that this is the first Christmas that she won't be able to come home and spend perhaps with her family. Lord, be with her. Lord, in the emptiness, perhaps again in the loneliness that we thought of this morning, undertake for her and bless her. Bless her mum, Hetty. Bless her auntie, Anne. Those who we know even in our own congregation who are related to Linda, who will miss her this Christmas time. Lord, we pray for them. We know, Lord, that in the wider family circle that there has been death since the passing of Mrs. Bell. And so, Lord, we pray for the whole family at this time. Bless them, we pray you, Lord. But Lord, be with Linda. Thank you that she's been able to progress and to continue with her work. Thank you, Lord, for the people who are being trained up, for the people who are uh, attending courses, for the children who, through online co uh, good news clubs, are still being able to hear the gospel message. We pray, Lord, for the Christmas initiatives that CEF will run, not only in Ireland, but across Eastern and Western Europe. We thank you, Lord, for the, the course that Linda and Linda were able to be involved in. Thank you, Lord, for both of those ladies and for their tenacity and for their fortitude in the gospel. Thank you, Lord, for the years of service that Linda has given to CEF and to the spread of the gospel. And we pray, O oh God, that many children and families would hear of the transforming message and power of the gospel and would trust in you. Lord, be with Linda. Lord, help us as a congregation and how we might bless her and encourage her and support her if we might give or pray like now or even go. Lord, there might be people in the congregation who you are speaking to about going and serving you. Lord, how we pray you'd raise up faithful missionaries who would go. Yes, Lord, people who will go long-term, short-term, during the summer, for men, Lord, into the gospel ministry. Lord, how we pray earnestly. There might be some, Lord, even listening in tonight, and they haven't been able to go on their regular times of summer service. They haven't been able to go, perhaps, with CAF or Scripture Union. They haven't been able to go on the SISM team or they haven't been able to go to New Horizon, or they haven't been able to go to Northern Ireland or to the Republic of Ireland. They haven't been able to go to Donegal or to Galway or to Cork. They haven't been able to go to the North Coast. They haven't been able to go to Eastern Europe, to Romania, to Hungary, to the Czech Republic. 
Lord, we know that even um, Matthew was supposed to go this week with Ambassadors Football to the city of Prague. And Lord, we're sorry that that couldn't happen. But Lord, in providence, we pray that you give him other opportunities of being able to go and support the work of ambassadors. But Lord, as we think about Linda, who has gone from this locality, Lord, burden us for the nations, burden us for our own locality. And that doesn't necessarily mean that we have to go full time the way Linda has. It might mean that we give up our holidays or our summer times, some of our wages. But Lord, bless Linda. May she know, Lord, of our thoughts and our prayers. Comfort her this Christmas. Bless all of her initiatives. Keep her close to you, Lord. Keep her walk with you in tune. And Lord, bless the work of her hands and where her feet take her in such a way, Lord, that she would reap and see a fruit for her faithful labor. May she know, Lord, of our prayers and of our encouragement. Lord, bless even the country of Romania and the country of Moldova where she works. Lord, bless the city of Sibiu where she lives. Even, Lord, might she see a community there turn from darkness into most glorious light. Be with her. Undertake for her, we pray, for Jesus' sake. Amen. So this morning we read from Isaiah chapter 9. We're going to read together the same seven verses this evening, but we're going to be honing in on just two words. Wonderful Counselor. But let's set it into its full context. This is Isaiah chapter 9, reading together from verse 1. And as always, this is infallible and holy truth. But there will be no gloom for her who was in anguish. In the former time, he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time, he has made glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. You've multiplied the nation you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as they are glad when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden, the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, you have broken us on the day of Midian. Every boot of the trampling warrior in battle tumult, and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it, with justice and with righteousness, from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Amen. So as we look at this, I suppose you could say the first part of my series, looking at the four titles in Isaiah chapter 9. I wonder um, if you've ever had a, a child or a baby You've wondered, what should you call this baby? I remember um, knowing a family, and the baby was called baby for about seven or eight weeks before the family decided on a name for baby. Um, but um, I did a, a little bit of genealogy recently, and um, the interesting thing is this, that there are some names in your family that keep coming up, that keep cropping up, um, on my father's side, on the Murr side, we, we're a family of boys. I have a brother. Uh, my father only has one brother. There's lots of boys, but I 
have a great, great, great grandmother whose name was Cecilia. And she had a daughter called Cecilia. And my great grandfather, so his sister was called Cecilia, but I had, my great grandfather had a niece also called Cecilia. And my grandfather had a, a sister also called Cecilia. Um, and actually, I have only one girl cousin on that side of the family. And uh, I don't know, Lisa, if you're watching tonight. Uh, you might be and you might not be. But you're the first girl in our family in about 150 years to not have the name Cecilia. Um, and on my mother's side of the family, it's similar, but with the name Francis for boys. Um, now, most of them got either Frank or Frankie, and uh, Lorna has told me that we will never have a Frank or a Frankie or a Francis. But there are those names in families that keep coming up. Um, another interesting fact is that uh, surnames quite often come up. So I am called Scott because my mother's maiden name was Scott. Um, and I think I've told you this before, I am Scott Murr, but I have a great uncle called Murr Scott. And so um, in First Amsterdam, I spent a summer assistantship there and he belongs to that congregation. And I remember people would have said to me, now remind me, is it Scott Murr or Murr Scott? But it's interesting in that my the four names in our family, so that my, my name, my mother's maiden name, and both my granny's maiden names, well, their names are Murr, Stuart, Graham, and Scott. And those are names that can all be first names as well. Um, so lots of names to ponder. And Scripture records many names for Christ. One person, but many names. And Isaiah says, his name shall be Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. This is one of his names. And it's the same for us, isn't it? Um, when you think about it, as I stand here this evening, as Scott Murr, I am a son a brother, a husband, in fact, until a few months ago, a grandson. As I stand here on the screen, I am pastor, minister, in the Kirk Session sense, moderator. I have differing roles and titles in the BB. I'm chaplain, and maybe you're the same. You have differing roles in church, job, society, community. And all of those different jobs or roles or titles or designations, they all tell us something different. And I feel like it's similar here concerning Christ. These titles reveal, they reveal more of who he is, what he, is, what he is coming to do, what he has done. So the first that we see tonight, wonderful counsellor. Um, and I said to you this morning that if you um, go home and listen to Handel's Messiah, you'll hear wonderful counsellor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And if you listen to Handel's oratorio, it's wonderful counsellor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, and almost makes the distinction that he is wonderful, space, counselor, space, mighty God. But actually, in the same way he is mighty God, in the same way he is everlasting Father, he is wonderful counselor. It's all one. He is wonderful counselor. And uh, I'm just going to leave this here, just to, as we're thinking about counselling. Um, please don't forget the counselling service, which uh, is being offered through the Connect Centre at this time. Should you be anxious, stressed, depressed, or in a low mood, there are people that you can talk to, 
Um, there is a counsellor through the Connect Centre that you're able to speak to during this time. And this will come up um, a little bit as well. This is Providence because these were put through my door just this evening. And uh, as we think about counselling, there is one who we can turn to who is the wonderful counsellor. So, you can avail of a counselling facility. You can, if you're stressed or anxious, go and speak to someone who can counsel. And what does that person do? Well, you hope they will encourage you. They will strengthen you. You hope they will be wise, people of wisdom. These are people who are walking in darkness. And Isaiah says there's a wonderful counsellor. And although the evenings are dark now with the, uh, with the clocks having changed as we approach the, the winter solstice, there's also darkness, isn't there, with regard to isolation and all that's going on in the, the world at the minute. There's anxiety, there's stress, there's low mood, there's bad mood. There's people that are getting upset with one another we take it out on one another. And actually, that is the situation here. There's darkness. Chapter 8 is speaking of foreboding darkness. In fact, verse 19 of chapter 8, and when they say to you, inquire of the mediums and the necromancers who chirp and mutter, should not a people inquire of their God? Should they inquire of the dead on behalf of the living? People were looking for help in the wrong places. That's what we see in Isaiah 8. There's darkness. And actually, people look to the darkness for help. They actually look into the darkness and they look into the emptiness for help. And all they find is more darkness and more emptiness. And there are forms of darkness and emptiness that the world is looking to and looking towards at this time, just like the people of Isaiah 8. As they are waiting for the Assyrian invasion, it says here that they inquired of mediums, necromancers, those who chirp and mutter, the Bible here says. They inquire of idols. They inquire of the dead. to the teaching and to the testimony, if they will not speak according to this word, it is because they have no dawn. In other words, this is darkness that will never bring forth light. And we can be people who search for light. We can search for answers. We can look into the darkness for light and we look in the wrong place. We need a counsellor. In Isaiah 8, in a time of thick darkness, Isaiah says, they needed a wonderful counsellor. In the darkness and in the gloom of 2020, we also need a wonderful counsellor. We need help and we need wisdom. We need help. Help. And we can't handle it ourselves. We can't. And yet Isaiah is clear. There's one who's a wonderful counsellor. In fact, in this wonderful counsellor, you find wisdom par excellence. If you were to go into any of the royal courts or into any of the presidential palaces or into any of the, the chambers of the prime ministers, what are they surrounded by? When you look at Boris Johnson appearing on TV, who's he surrounded by? Advisors, counsellors, chief medical officers, scientists, advisors, counsellors. But in Isaiah 9, we see the leader, the king, 
that we thought of this morning, the one who's in control, the king is also the counselor. This king needs no counselor. This king needs no corridor of advisor or advisory staff. He needs no chief medical officer because he knows everything about everything. This is the wonderful counselor. The book of Romans, Romans chapter 11 uh, and verse 34 says this of this wonderful counselor who knows everything. Romans 11 verse 34, for who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor? No one. Who has been his counselor? Question mark. In other words, no one needs to be. So what do we see about this wonderful counselor? What do we want to think about? Well, the first thing is this. The wonderful counselor, he knows. He knows everything. He knows you. He knows you. He knows me. He knows us inside and outside. Most counseling involves probing, involves questions. In fact, if you were to go to a council, your first session will be a lot of questioning, and you leave drained, tired, exhausted perhaps, because the counsellor needs you to open up, to talk, so they can assess where you are mentally, so they can assess where you are, to try and work out what it is you need, what help, what wisdom, what strength, where you need help the most. Christ is the wonderful counsellor. Yet he doesn't need to have that one-on-one -on -one session where you sit down and have to tell him everything and go over everything. Why? Because he knows you. He knows you. He knows me. He knows you through and through. He knows you through and through. He knows your words. He knows your thoughts. He knows your actions. He knows you all together. Psalm 139. I sat with somebody during the week and we read Psalm 139. He hems us in behind and before. Oh, how such knowledge is too wonderful. I cannot contain it. All the days ordained for me are written in your book before one of them has come to be. He knows us all together, this wonderful counselor. He knows all about you. He knows about your past. He knows about your secret thoughts. He knows what's going through your mind, the dinner, the children. He knows all about the future, what you're worried about, what you're apprehensive about for the next few weeks, for the next few months, for the next few years. He knows what you're going through. He knows what you've gone through. He knows what you will go through. He knows what's on your shoulders, every trial. He knows what you're thinking. He knows. He knows what no one else knows. He knows, the Bible says, the number of hairs on your head. He knows the days of your life. He knows the number of tears you will shed, the psalmist says. He bottles them up. He knows our frame. We thought about this this morning, actually. The word incarnation, the taking on of flesh, how he is bone of our bone and flesh of our flesh. He knows what it is to eat and to sleep, to be hungry, to be tired, to be alone. He knows your frame. He knows what you need. The wonderful counselor. He knows. What else does he, the wonderful counselor, know? Or what else does he do? Well, he's there. Wonderful counselor, Isaiah says. COVID has brought crisis upon our NHS. And as I stand here tonight, um, I want to continue to uh, remind you of the need to continue to pray for our NHS and also the members of our congregation who are involved therein. We have doctors, nurses, admin staff, cleaning staff, auxiliary staff who are at work in our NHS. 
and we thank you for all that you're doing. But, yes, there's a health crisis, hence why we're out of the building this evening. But I think many people will agree that there's another health crisis that will no doubt could even be bigger than the crisis that NHS is going through right now. And that's the mental health battle as a result of all that has gone through 2020. All of the mental health issues relating to isolation and lockdown and depression. All of the mental health issues relating to redundancies. Fam familial loss not being able to perhaps do the things that should have been done in 2020. And actually, counselling will be sought after. And of course, let me as always say that as not only the minister, um, but as the pastor here, um, I am able to speak to any of you. Um, even at the minute, we can go for walks and chat and talk, and that is something that, that I have done, and I'm happy so to do. Um, but this is something that people will seek counsel of, and counsel for. And some people will go to a counsellor for many weeks, and there won't be any sign of change. Some people go to counsellors and they're disappointed because there hasn't been change and you've left. You said, what a waste of money. Or I'm going to stop. There's been no change in my life. There's been no change in my circumstances. I'm disappointed in that counsellor. This is the wonderful counsellor. And this wonderful counsellor will never put you on hold. This wonderful counsellor will never tell you that there's a waiting list. This wonderful counsellor will never be asleep and unable to answer the phone. He's available at any moment, at any point, at any day. The psalmist says, Psalm 121. This is the one who slumbereth not nor sleeps. The Lord is thy keeper. He is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not strike thee by day nor the moon by night. He will keep your life. He will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. The all-seeing one. We thought about that from the book of Revelation during our series to the seven churches. This is the all-seeing one. People cannot always be available, but this wonderful counselor is always, permanently, perpetually, who is this wonderful counselor? Well, even there's a couple of chapters before chapter 9. In Isaiah 7, Isaiah describes this as Emmanuel. God with us, yes. He's available. God with us always. Actually, often the problem that we have is that we're unwilling to share with him. We're unwilling to take our burdens and lay them with him. The problem isn't the wonderful counsellor. The problem is our unwillingness to unload. We sometimes take our burdens and we take them to Calvary. We take them to the foot of the cross. We take them to Jesus. And then we pick them up again and we walk away. Sometimes we don't even do that. He is there. He is available always. He's there. What else about this wonderful counsellor? He speaks. He speaks. As I said earlier, as a minister, um, you're often called upon to give advice. And I recognize that I am not the expert in all things, and I don't ever try to be. Um, there are people that will come and seek all types of advice of their pastor, 
Um, and I'm not a lawyer, I'm not a doctor, um, I'm not a physio. Um, I have been asked all types of questions and um, there are many things that I can give advice about. Um, and I want to give good counsel and good advice. I want to be wise in how I do that. I want to be godly and biblical and helpful as we should all be, as we give advice. But sometimes the time comes when perhaps you do have to go and see a counsellor. And there is nothing wrong with that. If you're somebody here and you do suffer with mental health issues, like I said before, there's a counsellor available through the Connect Centre. You can seek counselling through your, through your doctor. Um, um, as they, they seek to, to understand what's wrong. Um, sometimes I get it wrong. But I will say this, if you're someone that needs counsel, as a Christian, make sure you seek a Christian counsellor. Make sure you seek someone who is a Christian counsellor. That's necessary because only a Christian counsellor can get what should be 100% in your life, and that's Christ. And like I said, sometimes we get it wrong. Sometimes I get it wrong. Sometimes a professional gets it wrong. But look at the wonderful counsellor. Look at the wonderful counsellor. He always gets it right. Jeremiah chapter 32 and verse 17 uh, says this. Uh, this is the, the text for a children's song uh, that we used to sing at home. Um, but it says this, Ah, Lord God, it is you who have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and by your outstretched arm. Nothing is too hard for you. Nothing, nothing. Great in counsel, mighty indeed. Great in counsel, mighty indeed, because nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing, nothing is impossible for thee. Great in counsel, mighty indeed. He's the wonderful counselor. He has wisdom that none of us have. He knows exactly what we need and he knows when we need it. When he came, he knew that we needed saving. He knew we needed salvation. That's what he provides for us in himself. <coughs> he came to give us what we need when we needed it. He shows us what we need and he provides the answer. He provides himself. The wonderful counselor is at hand. Don't reject him. Great in counsel. Mighty indeed. The wonderful counselor, he speaks. He speaks wisdom that none of us can speak. And lastly, the wonderful counsellor, he's the perfect counsellor. The perfect counsellor. Like I said, what happens if after months of counsel, nothing has changed? You stop going. You stop paying. You stop wasting your time. And perhaps you look for someone else who can help. We need to see change. We need someone who can help. Look at Christ, the wonderful counsellor. When you trust in him, the wonderful counsellor, you have all that he offers. Rest, life, the substitute, his blood, experience. When the little tracks or the little cards for the counselling service came through my door, the person who put it through also put through a magazine. And when I opened it, were these words. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. 
He lets me rest in green pastures. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. In Psalm 23, we see provision. We see refreshment. We see rest. We see provision. We see blessing. We, we see going before our shepherd in life, our shepherd in death, our shepherd in eternity. We see so many things, even just in Psalm 23, never mind in all the portions and passages of Scripture that we have before us. When you think of all that he offers, when you think of all that he has done, the transformations that take place in the Gospels, the tax collectors, the fishermen, the vagabonds, the thieves on the cross. When I look at myself and what he has done for me and how he has transformed me, how he has changed me, for many of you, the same. This is the wonderful counselor who is the perfect counselor. He knows all that we need. He gives us all that we need. He is all that we need. Someone who we can trust. Someone who we can rest upon. Coming up to this Advent season, the wonderful counselor is someone who we need. Someone during COVID-19, someone who we need the wonderful counsellor. Not just any counsellor, but the one who we thought of this morning. The one who came. The one who cares. The one who controls is the wonderful counsellor. The wonderful counsellor who knows. The wonderful counsellor who's there. The wonderful counsellor who speaks and the wonderful counsellor who is the perfect counsellor. Yeah, you can look to him. Let's pray. Father, thank you. You are the wonderful counselor. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. Oh, how we need that in our lives, in our homes, in our church, in our community. May we see you, Lord. The wonderful counselor. We see how you know. You know everything about us. You know our thoughts. You know more than even we know ourselves. That's why we can call you the wonderful counselor. You're there. Even when man cannot be there, you're always there. That's why you're the wonderful counselor that we can turn to at any point of day or night, during any catastrophe or even on the hilltop of joy. You speak, or you speak softly and tenderly. You speak what we need to hear. You give the right advice at the right time. You grant salvation, saving, because that's what we need. Mighty in counsel, mighty indeed, you're speaking. That's why you're the wonderful counselor. And Lord, when we think about even the best counselor, even the best pastor, Lord, none compared to the perfect counsellor who never gives the wrong advice, who's always there, who grants rest, refreshment, life, salvation, experience, light in life, light in the darkness, light when we need it the most. O oh Lord, may we see our need of this wonderful counselor. Might we want to tell others about him? Might we have faith, faith
faith in this wonderful counsellor. By faith we see the hand of God, the counsellor. Jesus, even here in Isaiah 9, 700 years before its fulfilment, the wonderful counsellor. May we realise, Lord, may we realise that we need him. Amen. We close our closing praises by faith. We praise. of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. Everybody keep safe and uh, see you at nine o'clock for the, the Zoom prayer meeting.